look at the uh, implementation of Azure Cosmos DB partition thing. So as uh, I've already created a, a Azure Cosmos DB uh, account. So we go there. If you remember from our last videos, uh, we go, go into overview, click on add container. And here, like we give the name to the our database. Uh, let's say it is OLTP. Then change the container like a uh, that's the container is families. Um, okay, let me let them make the container as uh, org, and the partition key will be the ID. So, uh, like I'm, I'm picking ID, but you can pick whatever it is in your uh, document. So this is the place where you implement your partition key, basically. And uh, and we need to whenever we implementing the partition key, we need to keep um, like partition key best practices in our mind. One of them is uh, basically um, uh, like you, you, you evenly distribution static. If it doesn't exit, use a composite key. We and avoid hot partition and those kind of things. Now let's jump into the. Uh, 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 partitioning in Azure Snaps Analytics. So Snaps, Azure Snaps dedicated SQL pool distribution and partitioning. So in Azure Snaps Analytics, which was formerly known as Azure Data Warehouse, uh, uh, Azure Snaps Analytics automatically shred or do horizontal par partitioning of uh, data into 60 distribution to optimize the performance of the system. So as you can see in this uh, image, uh, like a table will be divided into 60 partitions over the compute nodes and compute nodes you picked while creating your dedicated SQL pool. So basically, whenever you're creating a table, it's automatically already distributed or sharded, you can say, or horizontal partitioned into 60 times. And we as a user only can pick sharding or distribution pattern uh, when we define the tables. So mainly like hash, round robin, or replicated. If we don't uh, mention, or, or if we don't, uh, yeah, like when we ever be defining the table, we don't mention about the uh, our distribution pattern, like round robin will, will be the uh, by default choice. So there are basically three hash, round robin, replicated. If we don't define, round robin will, will be the be uh, by default choice. Now look at them in more detail. So basically the first one is the replicated, which is, uh, which what it do, it like replicate your table 60 times on your compute nodes. So this is ideal. So what that means is like your table will be, like all the records of your table will be distributed 60 times on compute node basically. And this is ideal for like small dimension tables in star schema, which are less than like two gigs and uh, and this is like two gigs after the compression. So Azure by default do a compression of, uh, I, I guess, uh, five times from the actual size. So basically it's good for small dimension files or like dimension files or lookup files, which are less than two gigs. And don't uh, use replicated uh, as a distribution when uh, our data warehouse units are changing or like, a, we, like our table have a lot of like write up transactions um, like it's it's keep updating basically. So it's good for like dimension tables and lookup tables. Don't use it when we have to do multiple write application transactions on the table or we keep changing our data warehouse units, which we pick when we creating the Azure SQL pool. Uh, round Robin, which I mentioned, it's like it's a by default. It is ideal for staging tables and uh, inside uh, like when we can't find a, a joining key or we can't uh, and this is also like an ideal like let's say uh, if we can't find a single p key to distribute which is like a requirement from hash uh, we won't be uh, then in that case use the round robin but the problem with round robin because like it has to suffer a lot of the data so performance could be slow so if uh, your um, data is like need a lot of uh, like a complex queries or something don't use it or like if they're large in size hash is the uh, last distribution which is basically 
uh, ideal for the large fact tables or like historical, like basically large size tables are the good candidates for it. Uh, but if uh, table don't have columns which uh, can be used as distribution, please don't use it. And distribution key should not be, uh, cannot be updated. So if you pick a key which keep updating, like don't use it as a distribution key. And any column which is like nullable is not a, is not a good, um, uh, good option for distribution. And the similar with the, like um, a column uh, that has a default value is not also a good option because then it will, will like uh, put a lot of records in those uh, nullable and the hash ones. Uh, sorry nullable and the, the with the default values so basically like the best practice is uh, pretty similar to the uh, partitioning in azure cosmos db is like the first thing is it need to be evenly distributed like it distribute uh, the data uh, evenly second it's like static like it does not change that often and the last thing which is different is like we need it any hash key will be um, any hash key which have more than 60 values will be a good hash key uh, so implementation is very straightforward as I mentioned we can um, we can define the distribution at the time of our uh, DDL or like when we defining the table so here you can sorry here you can see that like we just creating a table name fact internet sales these are the columns type not null and in the end just you need to add width this is our uh, compression so we're going to talk about that later don't worry about it but like distribution is basically distribution equal to hash product key so in case of uh, replicated you just need to do distribution equal to replicated in case of round robin you don't have to do anything it will be by default so it's very straightforward and uh, this is the implementation we're not going to demo it because uh, um, we can't see those 60 distributions but uh, this is like that's like a behind the scene kind of things which we can't see it so but uh, for understanding like who, how it works and how we can do it now you will be wondering like if uh, a czar dedicated sql pool do the distribution automatically or like you can say shredding automatically uh, do we need partitioning or not or uh, is, is like that's done that's done deal so um, so answer to that is like uh, in some cases you might still need to do the partition by your own too so basically whenever in we doing partition in azure snaps uh, uh, dedicated sql pool we need to keep the factor of 60 before uh, doing the partition when i say factor of 60 that means like those 60 distributions because we don't want to kill the performance of Azure Synapse Analytics uh, by over partitioning. Because uh, like if we have like l l thousands of uh, partitions, it will slow down the um, Azure Synapse anal Analytics. Like whenever you're querying, like it have to go to so many partitions, like query uh, result, like uh, the output will be very slow. Uh, so recommended is like, a, is like 1 million rows per partition, not exactly but like close to that so just think about it like if you do 100 partitions by yourself and i'll show you how you can do that that's easy too let's we can do at the when we defining the table so uh let's say you, we did like 100 partitions on the table 60 partitions are already um like it's going to be done by azure like whether we do the partition or not like azure is going to do that 60 partition so we creating in total 6000 partitions and uh as the recommended um as the recommended uh, storage per partition is 1 million rows so just imagine like we need 60 billion rows to get the best performance so if you if we have the data which is which have like 6 billion records we will go for it if we don't like if it's like very less number of rows or something we'll stick to the distribution so we have to make a, a decision while like um, after knowing our data we have to make a decision whether we want to do partition by our own or like we should be okay with the distribution 
and as you can see it's also pretty straightforward like it's here you just start with the partition keyword and uh, then whatever is your partition key and what's its range so straightforward and as i mentioned like we can't see the partitioning uh so we just need to know how we need to do and uh, as i mentioned like a sql pool automatically do the distribution so we need to keep that thing in mind before uh, implementing our partition because we don't want to jeopardize our uh, as our snaps analytics performance Oh, next and the last is the Azure Data Lake Gen 2 partitioning. And if you remember from our last video, not sorry, last video, but like a, from the designing Azure Data Lake Gen 2 video, like we talked about the folder structure has to be like subject area, date, year, month, and DD. And even we saw there, like I we manually created these structure, but um, yeah, but that's not how things work in a real world. Like you can't manually create structures like our code because uh, anything storing into Azure Data Lake Gen 2 has to create the structures. So in this case, like I'm, uh, we, let's, uh, one second. Yeah, in this case, we will see how from Azure Snaps Analytics or Databricks, you can imagine or any like um, place which feeding the data from SQL, like Spark can create the structure. So let's, uh, sorry, one second. What's the next slide? Yeah, let's go to the implementation of it. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, so basically what's happening here, this is my um, Azure Synapse Studio where I'm reading this, uh, uh, I'm reading this data sets. I've already ran this code, but uh, I'll explain what exactly here is what we are doing. So this is the, this is we just telling like, uh, this is our magic uh, PySpark language query and here we are importing some functions which are straightforward year month day of month and after that uh, i'm reading uh, our green taxi trip data i have manually uploaded that so let's go to here wait take it so i've created like two the raw and clean folders i've created manually but after that uh, in raw i uploaded this uh, csv file that is the green taxi trip data which is like open data sets from new york available and after that in clean i didn't do anything like this everything is done by the by our code so basically what we're doing here like if you look in the first line we are importing year and month then after that uh, we reading this data let's see let me do this yeah so we're reading this uh, csv file from this location into this data frame displaying 10 records uh, which are presented here too and after that we like simply creating new column year month date and there was a like a field uh, available like you can see it like i picked this field randomly i don't know what exactly it is but i picked it to just show like okay how we can create oh sorry oh, wait, once how we can create a folder structure like this automatically instead of doing manually. So let's go here. So I just created three new columns here, month, date, and then I fetches the year from here, month, date, and then I simply write it back by partition uh, with the overwrite mode into this, this into the clean folder. So this is my location, this is my mode, and these are the, um, these are the fields by these are the fields by which i did the partition and this is what we wanted uh, if you look at here this is what we want year month date and if we go and look into our uh, so so you can see year then you can go month and day i know like this look like one day of data because uh, i just took a sample but the idea is like that program is creating and here you can see we have two months and you go in here or oh, See, boom, this is like multiple folders or multiple days. And you go there, this is our parquet file. So this is how you do the partitioning in uh, Azure uh, Data Lake Gen 2. And if you stay here, this is the Azure Data Lake Gen 2 I'm using for, which is mapped along with Azure Snaps Analytics. So uh, that's all for this video. Thanks again, be safe and stay tuned for the next videos.